the Bible verses uh, uh, for today. Uh, because of the lack of time, we won't be reading all the verses, but uh, only few verses will be read by uh, Cedric. So uh, this morning, uh, the topic is uh, remember, repent, and repeat. Remember, repent, and repeat. So that is the topic, and we are going to read, uh, I mean, Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repeat, repent and do the first work, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lamb stamp from its place, unless you repent. Praise God. So remember, repeat, and, sorry, remember, repent, and repeat. Amen. So I am sure that uh, I mean every one of us are well familiar with these verses, and especially about uh, the I mean uh, Revelation chapter one, two, and all those portions because we have been uh, learning uh, all those portions from uh, our I mean Friday Bible study. So uh, Revelation chapter two and three speaks about uh, the seven churches in Asia Minor. So Apostle Apostle John is writing the letters to each church by receiving the revelation from uh, Jesus Christ. For all the uh, churches, there were uh, many appreciations and uh, uh, mentioning about the weak points and solutions and warnings and also the promises and rewards also is uh, mentioned uh, in each uh, Amen church uh, Amen uh, messages. So I'm not going to uh, share all those uh, things elaborately because uh, we already uh, covered uh, all those portions about church at Ephesus in uh, our Friday uh, Bible study. So uh, today we are mainly focusing on the weak points of the Ephesus church and its solution. The weak points of uh, the Ephesus church and the solution of that weak point. Amen. So that is mentioned in these verses. I mean, uh, I mean Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. So regarding the establishment of this church, we read in Acts chapter uh, 20 uh, verse uh, 31. We are not going to read that verse. I mean Acts chapter 20 verse 31. Paul uh, stayed longer in Ephesus than in any other city, and Paul made an extended Bible study in Ephesus for three years. I mean, through that, uh, I mean, three years of Bible study, there came a revival, and uh, many were, I mean, added to the church. So it was from Ephesus, the missionaries, I mean, went and established the churches in many other places in Asia Minor also. So it is believed that Apostle Paul established this church in Ephesus. Now, I mean, when we got to uh, go through the, I mean, chapter 2, verses 2, 3, and 6, we will be reading that verses. I mean, uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, uh, verses 2, 3, and four, uh, three and 6, okay? So Jesus is appreciating the church for many things. Jesus is appreciating, I mean, the church at Ephesus for many things. I mean, this is a great thing that we have to understand. I mean, God is always appreciating us. I mean, so this is what uh, we read about the, I mean, Ephesus. That we read that verses, then we will go on. Revelations chapter 2, verse 2. I know your work, your labor, and your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostle and are not, and have found them liars. Verse number three. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Verse number six. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Amen. So there are many, I mean, appreciations to the church at Ephesus by God. And I'm not uh, elaborately speaking about those things because already we covered uh, on the Friday Bible study. So li listen very carefully. Even though God appreciating them for many things, he is revealing only one weak point of the church at Ephesus. I mean, that is they have left uh, or lost their first love. They have left or lost their first love. I mean, this is very important to understand that there are many plus points and appreciated things mentioned about the church at Ephesus, but also speaks about the weak point. I mean, so let me let me tell you one thing that this is 
this is the this is the style of jesus and i really like that uh, method of jesus when he is speaking something i mean uh, this is the method that uh, jesus is speaking you know he is i mean uh, appreciating the people then after that i mean he is giving i mean mentioning the weak points of the people then he is giving the warnings uh, against uh, all those weak points and the problems so that is the style of jesus christ for example you know uh, when we uh, go to matthew's uh, chapters chapters 5 to 7 matthew chapter 5 to i mean 7 that uh, three chapters 5 and 5 6 and 7 these three chapters is is the is the uh, is known as the mount sermon of jesus while he was uh, in his public ministry so that is the mount sermon of jesus that means um, jesus made the sermon i mean and he preached the sermon on the mount so that's the reason that 5 6 and 7 of matthews i mean is known as the mount sermon of jesus christ but i mean again when you go to i mean chapter 5 i mean verses 3 to 12 chapter 5 verses 3 to 12 is known as the beatitude beatitudes means the blessedness of the people malayalathil parannirikkunathu bhagyavasthagal ennaanu bhagyavasthagal beatitudes of uh, the people i mean the blessedness of the people that is from chapter 5 verses 3 to 12 i mean so i mean you see the i mean method of his speech here it is it is very i mean different and i mean very 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 i mean uh, interesting to understand that jesus is using a special method of speaking to the to the people and to the to the disciples i mean in chapter 5 verses 3 to 12 i mean he is sharing about the beatitudes beatitudes means the blessedness of the people i mean you are blessed you are blessed because of these and these and all those things i mean and he starts chapter 5 with a blessing and encouragement and comfort and reward and many things else I mean, but as he go on, I mean, preaching from uh, chapter 5, verse 13 onwards, chapter 5, verse 13 onwards of Matthew, I mean, his sermon becomes a little more hard and sharp. And there he says, you are the salt and you are the light of this world. This is a little more, little more sharp and a little more hard, you know. Till that time, Jesus was encouraging those people and saying that you are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. At the same time, as he go on preaching, he is saying that you are the light and you are the salt of this world. Hallelujah. Again, in the following verses, he speaks about the I mean, seriousness of committing murder and the seriousness of committing adultery and strict rules about the divorce and also regarding prayer and fasting and judging others. All these things are coming there. After, I mean, maybe after, I mean, uh, uh, after five, maybe six, chapter six and seven, all those things. I mean, there are many things written. I mean, Jesus is speaking, I mean, very seriously about something. Okay, I mean, serious about committing murder, serious about committing adultery. And, uh, and there are some strict rules about uh, the divorce. And also, he is speaking something about the, how to pray, how to fast. And when you are judging others, is that pleasable to God? All those things are there. And he concludes his speech in that seventh chapter, I mean, with giving strict rule about the false prophets also. Amen. So this is the style and this is the method of Jesus Christ when he was doing his public ministry in this earth. I mean, this is really interesting to know about the method of speech of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the same style of speech is used here in our today's text. I mean, the text is, I mean, chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. So Jesus is, I mean, using the same method of style, I mean, speech, I mean, in this, in this message to the, I mean, church at Ephesus also. When he is speaking to the church at Ephesus, the believers of churches, Ephesus church were, I mean, very, very strict in doctrinal issues. And in this tactic in, uh, I mean, gospel work and the ministry of God. And they were working hard and uh, were not able to tolerate evil. And they were hating the things which God also was hating. But they were not able to maintain their first love and the real brotherly love. And they lost the real love. This is very, I mean, very important to understand. You know, they were so active. The people at Ephesus, the, 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 the believers at Ephesus. They were so eagerly doing the ministry of the Lord. They were working for the Lord. And they were just, I mean, opposing all the evil things. And they were not able to tolerate the evil things. And always they were standing firm for the Christ. I mean, they, their activities are very good. 
at the same time, at the same time, hallelujah, they were not able to maintain their first love and the real brotherly love, and they lost the real love. That is the that is the only one weak point that Jesus is quoting in this passage. Hallelujah. You know, when we, when we, when we study about uh, the church at Ephesus, we have to think about uh, the, 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 the epistle to the Ephesians. I mean, Apostle Paul have reminded them many times about uh, the importance of the real love towards God and towards the brethren while he was writing the letter to the Ephesians. It is very important. You know, I mean, Apostle Paul was writing to the letter, uh, letter to the Ephesians, the Ephesian church. He was reminding them, I mean, I mean, again and again about the importance of the real love towards God and also towards the brethren. For example, we will read, uh, I mean, I mean, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15, Apostle Paul is appreciating the believers of church at Ephesus. I mean, what is that appreciation? We will read that verse, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints. Yeah, what is that? You know, he is appreciating them that they are having the love towards God and also towards the brethren. I mean, I mean the, the brethren. And that is the first one. And in I mean, chapter 5, verse 2, chapter 5, verse 2 of Ephesians, he encouraged them and saying, walk in love just as Christ has also loved you. Right? I mean, walk in love just as Christ also loved you. But they could not keep their first love towards the end. You know, Apostle Paul is encouraging them and appreciating them and giving the warning that you have to keep your first love towards Christ. You know, you have to walk in love with Jesus Christ and love God, love Jesus always. I mean, but they, they, they were not able to maintain that first love towards the end. That's what, uh, I mean, again and again, I mean, uh, Apostle Paul also is writing, and here, I mean, I mean, Apostle John also is writing in the book of Revelation that you lost your first love. Hallelujah. So now we will go to Jeremiah chapter, I mean, 2 verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2, Jeremiah is uh, I mean, reminding the people of Israel about they rejected the living God and served the other pagan gods and goddesses. I mean, Jeremiah is reminding the people what is that, you know, the, the people of Israel, they were rejecting the living God and they served the other pagan gods and goddesses. We will read that verse, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. Jeremiah 2, verse 2. Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. I mean, this is very important verse, you know. This verse is referred to the, I mean, love which they had with God, like, like the, I mean, newly, I mean, wedded couple or the love of the, I mean, betrothal or something. Okay, so it, it is there, it is very clearly written there, you know. I mean, they were having a close relation with God and they were loving God in a, in a wonderful manner. I mean, hallelujah. So here, I mean, this love towards God is referred to a newly worded couple's love. I mean, I mean, God says that I remember the devotion of your youth. I remember the devotion of your youth and how as a bride you loved me. This is very important. I mean, so God says to the people of Israel, I just remember the devotion of your youth. What is the devotion of your youth? Means, you know, they, those people, I mean, were having that relation with each other in a, in a wonderful manner and they were devoted for, I mean, for God. I mean, and how they, I mean, a, a bride you loved me. I mean, in Malayalam it is, uh, it is written, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, what is that? I mean, uh, you, you, you were, uh, you, 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 Vivaham, yeah, Vivaham Nishicha Kalatile Snehu Nyan or Kunu. Okay, Yavanatile Patim, Vivaham Nishicha Kalatile Snehu Nyan or Kunu. Hallelujah. I remember the devotion of your youth and how, as a, as a, as a bride, you loved me. Hallelujah. You know, the, the first love mentioned here in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 is referred to the love of a newly wedded couple. You know how it is. 
you know how it is i mean what is the what is the love i mean between the 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 bride and the bridegroom i mean the husband and wife in the initial stage hallelujah so how you, i mean have you ever seen uh, the, the newly wedded couple in your life i mean how they speak uh, each other and how they behave uh, when they go to the restaurant or when they i mean travel in bus or train or plane you know it is it is very interesting you know you know we have to think about that they don't i mean mind uh, anything about uh, outside you know whatever happens outside they don't mind it but they will be always engaged with looking at each other and talking and talking and talking for a long time you know for example husband will i mean give food to the food to the wife and wife will give food to the husband and they are so excited and of getting their getting married i mean so they are so excited and they are not minding anything i mean happens outside you know if somebody i mean makes some disturbance from outside this couple is not bothered about those things they still love each other and they still speak each other they still look i mean to face to face and all always they are loving and loving and loving and speaking and speaking and speaking and they have that close relation with each other so each each moment i mean is precious for them you know for example if husband is gone to the office wife uh, i mean will be i mean calling in every one hour this happens in the initial stage of their family life hallelujah but you watch them maybe maybe after 20 years or 25 years you think about yourself let us think about ourselves i mean how was the uh, how was the situation when we were married the parents i mean now after maybe 20 years maybe 10 years or 20 years or 25 years what happened he goes i mean maybe husband i mean goes from um, morning to the office in between no phone calls there is no relation i mean husband uh, is on his way and wife is on her way and children on their own way i mean isn't it isn't it so same thing is happening in our life also automatically these people lost their love which they had in the initial days of their wedding okay in the initial days of the wedding they are so close and they are so connected together they are speaking and speaking having that relation keeping the relation maintaining that love maintaining that relationship but after a few years that is lost here the, the here the people of church at Ephesus they lost the real first love towards god lost the punctuality they lost the enthusiasm and they lost the real first love towards the brethren too and they lost the real love towards the perishing souls hallelujah so this morning let me encourage you one thing that whenever this is happening in our personal life or family life we have to come back to the lord and ask to the lord pardon and say oh lord i'm coming to your presence and i need that first love again i need to refresh that first love in my life oh god hallelujah you know sometimes you know i mean we are losing that love towards god we are losing that punctuality i mean sometimes we are losing that enthusiasm for the name of the lord and sometimes we are i mean losing the love towards our brethren i mean and sometimes you are losing that real love towards the perishing souls i don't know how many of you are praying for the perishing souls this time you know when we come to when we when when we when we came to christ and when we accepted jesus christ and in those days remember about those days I mean, just to be reminded about those days, you know, when we come to Christ and when we took baptism and we were thinking that, okay, I am, I am a child of God. I came to Christ and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior and I need all my family members and all my neighbors and all my friends to come to Christ. That was our intention, you know, that was a prayer. But today, let me tell you one thing, how many of you are praying for the perishing souls? how many of you are praying how many of you are having the burden about the perishing souls hallelujah so this is what is happening in our christian life also today you know today many people i mean love themselves okay we don't have time to love god we don't have time to i mean i mean uh, give our love towards god but many of the time many of the people are loving themselves and some people are loving their beauty they are spending more time for i mean getting more beauty some people are loving their job always they are engaged with their job some people are loving their family so much some people are i mean loving their children so much and some people are i mean i mean are loving their friends so much 
you know they have enough time to spend for all those activities and they have enough time i mean enough time to spend with their friends and their family and in the in the office and uh, i mean to do everything everything hallelujah but but they doesn't have the time to join for a prayer meeting or a church service or for a quiet time with the lord and meditating the word and for a family prayer this is very important hallelujah we have enough time to spend for anything we are ready to go for anything we are ready to do anything but most of the time what is happening we do not have the time for prayer how many of the families are having the family prayer in your family in your house we do not have the time for the family prayer we do not have the time for the meditating the word of god sitting quietly in the presence of god and listening from the word of god and reading the bible meditating the bible i mean who is spending the time for that hallelujah so let me let me i mean praise god i mean let me i mean tell you one thing that with what you, or, or 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 with whom we spend majority of our time shows towards what is our love I mean, you know, with what or with whom we spend our majority of time, that shows towards what is our love. Hallelujah. You know, we will read one more portion from Matthew, Matthew chapter, I mean, 22, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 uh, 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 through 40. Yes, yeah, certainly you can read that for us. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and all the prophets. Praise God. Amen. So what is that? You know, here we understand yell i mean uh, they actually i mean matthew chapter 22 i mean verses uh, uh, 34 to uh, 40 here i mean jesus is uh, i mean uh, jesus said to the pharisees about the great and foremost i mean um, commandment what is that love the lord and love your neighbor love the lord and love your neighbor hallelujah amen praise god i mean so uh, again i mean uh, romans chapter 5 verses 35 and uh, 35 and uh, 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 39, that also we'll read that verse, uh, setting. Romans chapter 5, verses 35 to 39. Romans 5, 30. 35 to 39. Sorry, Pastor, I could not get there. Romans 5, 5, 35 to 39. Romans 5 finished at 21. Oh, um. Romans 8. Yeah, Romans, Romans 8. 8. Okay. Yeah, Romans 8. Yes, Romans 8 verses uh, uh, 35 to 39. All right, Romans 8, verse 35. Yes. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for, you, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persecuted that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creatures created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So here in this passage, uh, I mean, Apostle Paul is, uh, I, mean, I mean, saying and encouraging those people that nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Here Paul is encouraging the believers and reminding them about 17-fold struggles. 17-fold struggles are written there. 
amen and says that even though we go through the 17 fold struggles i mean 17 kinds of i mean troubles in your life we will not be separated from the love of god i mean you know uh, uh, you have to understand one thing satan is very tricky and uh, and without our knowledge i mean satan does something to lose our first love and destroy i mean uh, uh, destroy our relation with uh, i mean god i mean for example i know uh, 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 you know one one story i, I just remember one story uh, uh, how satan is trying to tempt it is it is it is it is, it is a it's a it's a just at a story only i mean you know uh, how satan is tempting or sa- how satan is i mean uh, making problem in the in the life of the i mean christian people you know most of the time we are not knowing i mean what is happening we are not knowing what is happening you know most of the time we do not know how satan is i mean uh, tempting us and sa- sometimes satan he is i mean doing something without without our knowledge also i mean you know uh, this is a story about uh, uh, this is not an incident but this is a story once there was a christian man uh, running a hotel and uh, there was a cook also in that hotel and he was a muslim guy and he was making jalebi jalebi is very sweet and jalebi um, we all know that uh, i mean what is jalebi and uh, i mean what is speciality of jalebi we will all, all like maybe i mean so you know both of them uh, were thick friends and uh, so one day satan went to this hotel and took a piece of uh, a jalebi and uh, stick it on the on the wall and satan left the place then when a, when a, when a fly saw this piece of jalebi that also came was stick on it then when a, when a lizard i mean saw this fly lizard also came to eat the fly i mean but the lizard could not i mean catch the fly but that has fell on the hands of the cook who was making the jalebi i mean all of this all of the sudden he just shake i mean his hands same time the owner of that hotel was coming to that room then the hot oil and hot jalebi and all was spread on owner's dress i mean so the, the the owner was not knowing what happened there actually and he gave a child slap on the i mean cook's face and that became a big problem i mean because the owner was a christian owner was a christian and cook was a muslim you know and the story ends with a big fight between muslims and christians but who is the main problem maker satan is the main problem maker there you know satan just i mean stick the the, the jalebi a piece of jalebi on the wall that is that's the only thing that satan did the satan went away but the problem is starting from there and always i mean this is happening in our life also many a times you know satan is doing something when I mean, satan is trying to tempt the people and i mean satan is trying to create the problems in in our families and in our personal life in our churches because i mean he knows that i mean if a person is i mean losing the first love towards god then there will be some problem i mean i mean satan will tempt us and to to to, to create the problems you know something is happening in our personal life sometimes what is that we lose our first love towards god i mean and the brotherly love and we lose our real i mean relationship with god our creator because of many reasons of course satan i mean brings many suggestions and trying to break the, uh, our our cross i mean relationship with this but it is our responsibility to keep that first love towards god always hallelujah so now we will go to the i mean threefold uh, uh, solutions for the weak points you know this is a serious problem our weak point is a serious problem most of the time the people are not thinking about that at the same time we will go to that what is that you know the serious problem is our weakness the serious problem which is mentioned about the church at ephesus is our uh, their weakness what was the, i mean what was the i mean weakness of that church i mean they lost their first love or they left their first love i mean now in in these verses maybe maybe i mean uh, uh, chapter 2 revelation chapter 2 verse 5 i mean apostle uh, john is writing about three fold solution that john is writing but he received it from the from jesus christ i mean he is writing something like this i mean there are three fold solution for this serious problem or to get back to the first law what to do what to do to get back to the first law that you had in the initial stage the number one is uh, i mean have you read that verse i mean chapter 2 verse 5 yeah the revelation 2 verse 5 remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the first works 
or else I'll come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yes. So what is that? What is the first solution for the for the problem or the struggle? From I mean, rem, I mean remember from where you have been fallen. Remember from where you have been fallen and find out what is our weak points and shortcomings. Hallelujah. You know, when you read uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 17, Luke chapter 15, verse 17, the prodigal son left his father's house, but in a particular situation, he remembered about his mistakes and fault. So the first solution is remember from where you have been fallen. This is very important. You know, most of the time, we know that we are fallen and we know that our weakness, I mean, uh, we know that, uh, I mean, we have, we, I mean, something happened in our life, but we are not taking time to remember how we were fallen. And we are not trying to understand, I mean, I mean, what was the first love or what was the first situation, initial stage. I mean, when we met Jesus and when we come to follow Jesus Christ, I mean, here, the prodigal son, he left everything from the father's house. I mean, and, but, in, but in a particular situation, I mean, after losing everything, he just remembered about his mistakes and fault and he is coming back. Hallelujah. So the second, I mean, solution uh, is written in, uh, I mean, uh, book of uh, Ephes Ephesians, uh, sorry, book of Revelation chapter two, verse five is repent. Okay, repent from where? From the present situation of mistakes from the present situation of mistakes. I mean, the first one is remember from where you have been fallen. Then repent from the present situation of mistakes. That is, you know, repentance means uh, the, the, the change of mind. Repentance is a change of mind. I mean, uh, maybe taking a, taking a new decision, taking a new decision uh, to turn to the father's house like the prodigal son. You know, when you read Luke chapter 15, verses 18 and 21, there we understand that prodigal son took a decision that I had everything in my father's house and I am taking a new decision that I will go back to my father's house. This is called the repentance. I mean, so when we repent about the present situation or the mistakes, then we will take a decision that I'm repenting about these mistakes and I'm taking a new decision that I will go back. And I will, if, if we lose our first love, then we have to take a decision that I will be, I'm a reconnector and I'll be going back to my father's house and I will have that, I'm a relationship, I mean, with God. I mean, so uh, sometimes then uh, people are asking, is, I mean, repentance necessary for a believer? Repentance is a necessary thing for a believer? I say, yes. Why? Even if we are I mean, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ because of the influence of the sin and the influence of the Satan, I mean, mistakes and sins are happening in our life. We cannot say that we are perfect. You know, everyone has a weakness. Everyone has a problem. I mean, but the, 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 the thing is, we have to be very careful about our, I mean, weakness and weak point. And we have to think about, I mean, how Satan is trying to influence us. How Satan is trying to, I mean, uh, I mean, sin is trying to, I mean, make mistakes, uh, mistakes in our life. So we need, to, we need the cleansing every, every moment. Hallelujah. You know, for example, the church at Ephesus was a Christian church. Okay. The church at Ephesus was a Christian church. And it was a congregation of uh, a strong born again believers. The people, those who were gathering together in the church was, I mean, very, very strong born again believers and uh, about uh, uh, the church at Ephesus, I mean, uh, God is appreciating many things in the, the previous verses, but still they had some shortcomings. They had still shortcomings. And this message is referring to their weakness also. You know, most of the time, uh, some of the people are frequently saying something, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything perfect and uh, I am an uh, active person in the church and uh, I'm a good person. I'm not doing any wrong, and uh, but I have only one weakness in my life. You know, I usually hear this point uh, from many of the believers in many churches. You know, they say, sir, okay, uh, usually I'm not doing any other mistakes, but uh, I'm a, I, I think that I'm a perfect person. I'm an active person in the church, and I'm doing uh, everything, and I'm uh, in, in choir, and I'm, I'm praying, and I'm worshiping, and I'm giving the offering and the tithe and everything. I'm doing everything. Still, I have a small weakness in my life. You know, I know that everyone has the weakness. 
I mean, me too have the weakness. But God knows everything. Think about that. God knows everything. But that person is not trying for a change or transformation. You know, still continuing in sin and mistake and weakness. You know, there are some people saying, okay, I have only one weakness. Okay, but can you, can you just think about that? And how many times you prayed for that weakness? Did you pray for that? Did you pray for that? Maybe you have the weakness. I have the weakness. Many people have the weakness. But if you're continuing in that same weakness again and again, that is a sin. And so come to, come to the presence of God and ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I know this is my weakness and I need a change. I need a transformation. I need to change my situation. Hallelujah. When you pray for that situation, I mean, God will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you to overcome that weakness. I mean, weakness. I mean, but some of the people are saying, okay, this is a weakness. Everyone is having weakness. I am also having this weakness. And this is my weakness. I cannot come over out of it. No, it is not possible. You know, you can come out of that. I mean, when you pray, when you trust in the Lord, when you, I mean, pray for the power of the Holy Spirit and presence of the Holy Spirit, that will help you to come out of the all the weakness. Hallelujah. Where there is a will, there is a way. Hallelujah. You know, First John chapter chapter one verse nine. First John chapter, I mean, one verse nine says that confess our sins and God is faithful to forgive. Right? Confess our sins and God is faithful to forgive. So the second solution written in this uh, I mean, book of Revelation chapter 2 is repent. Repent. Now we will go to the I mean, third solution that is repeat. The third solution is repeat. You know, repeat means the first work you did in the initial stage. What to repeat? What to repeat? You repeat the same thing that you did in the initial stage. What was the situation and what, what they did in the initial stage? They were loving God without anything. I mean, they were not having any hindrance. I mean, even though there were persecution, even though there were problems, even though there were struggles, hallelujah, they were just I mean, trusting in the Lord and they were always loving God. You know, in chapter 2, verse 2, God is appreciating them and saying that, I know your deeds. I know you were loving God and your brethren now. And in verse 5, says you repeat the same deed which you did in the initial stage. This is the third solution for the people, those who are having the weakness in their life. Hallelujah. So actually, today most of the churches and, uh, and Christians are uh, very active in many things. Right? So they are engaged with the uh, uh, prayer meetings and church activities and charitable works and uh, ritual uh, and everything and religious practices, everything. They are so engaged with all those things. That is very good. That is very good. Whatever it may be, that is very good. If they are active in the Christian life, if they are active in the I mean, church activities, that is very good. They are maintaining that. But doesn't have the same love towards God I mean, they are ready to do anything for the church. They are ready to do anything for the friends. I mean, they are ready to do anything for other people. But still, let us think about, let us just examine ourselves. I mean, hallelujah. Do we have that mind of, uh, I mean, maintaining the love towards God? Hallelujah. Just find out what is our weakness. Just find out what is our problem, where we have fallen. And hallelujah, let us examine also this, this morning. And let us say, oh Lord, I'm coming back to you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we all I mean, close our eyes in the presence of God this morning? Hallelujah. We are coming to the presence of God with that burden that God says that, okay, I mean, God is I mean, blessing you and God is appreciating you. Hallelujah. We, shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God? I mean, let us I mean, look at the Lord in prayer and let us examine also with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. I mean, today, I mean, church at I mean, God was saying that, okay, I have many things to appreciate you. Hallelujah. I have many things to appreciate you. And Paul was saying that, I know that I founded this church in a, in a, in a critical state where there was persecution, where there was, there was struggle. I found this church. And now I'm just encouraging you and you have to still walk in love with God. I mean, that means you lost your first love from the Lord. Hallelujah. But now, I mean, again and again, I mean, he says that, okay, I mean, I'm, the appreciations are good. Your activities are very good. Whatever you do for the name of the Lord, that is very good. All the rituals and religious activities and practices, that is very good. 
I mean, you're giving the offering, you're giving the, the, the tithe, that is very good. You're working for the Lord, you're doing the charitable work, that is good. But just remember, what is the situation, our relationship with God? Hallelujah. This morning, let us have that close relationship with God this morning. Hallelujah. Let us I mean, come to the presence of God and let us think about our situation today. Hallelujah. Do we have that in the size of that which we had in the, in, in the initial stage? Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I here, I mean, John is, I mean, uh, referring to the, to the, to the, and connecting this words uh, to the, to the, I mean, newly couple, I mean, a worded couple. Why? You know, they were having, they were having a close relation with each other. I mean, they were always speaking together. I mean, they had time to spend together. They had time to spend together. Hallelujah. But today what is happening most of the time, hallelujah, we don't have the time to spend with God. We have enough time with others. We have enough time to spend with the other matters. We are spending more time for other, other things. Maybe for our job, or maybe for our friends or family, whatever it may be. But we don't have the time to spend in the presence of God. We have no time to spend for a prayer meeting. We have no time for a prayer, I mean, church service. Hallelujah. We don't have a time for meditating the word of God. I don't know how many of you are meditating the word of God daily in your life. I don't know how many of you are praying. I mean, taking a quiet time and sitting in the presence of God, meditating the word of God and listening from the word. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, how many of you are praying for the daily bread? Then this morning, let me encourage you that hallelujah. I mean, if you have fallen from somewhere, I mean, if you have any weakness in, in, in some area, let us come back to God. Hallelujah. Let us come back to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I mean, the solutions are written there. Let us examine also with the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us, I mean, repeat the first love. Let us repeat the good deeds that we did, I mean, in our initial stage. Initial stage means when we met Jesus Christ. When we come to the Christianity or when we accepted Jesus as a personal Savior, we had a close relation with God. But today, what happens we have a close relation with our family. We have a close relation with our friends. We have a close relation with our neighbors. But what is the situation of your close relationship with Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. This morning, this is the right time to come back to the initial stage. Hallelujah. And, and say to the Lord, oh Lord, I'm coming back to your presence of God. I need the same situation when I was coming and when I was accepting Jesus as my personal Savior. Hallelujah. This is the time to, to, to remember from where we, we have been fallen. And also, this is the right time to repeat I mean, I mean, about the things that we have done in the previous days and in the in the in the initial stage. Hallelujah. And again, I mean, I mean, lastly, I mean, it says that again, okay, repent about your mistake and repeat all those things we, what we were doing in the initial stage. Hallelujah. So well, let us let's work for the Lord. Hallelujah. When we when we when we when, when we come to the presence of God, hallelujah. Let us let us ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I mean, I mean, I mean, give me, I mean, I mean, remind me about my mistakes or all. Remind me about my weakness, oh God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm coming to your presence, oh God. I mean, help me, oh God. Support me, oh God. Encourage me, oh God. Hallelujah. I told you, I mean, everyone has a mistake, but same time, same time, think about, I mean, what is your mistake and what is your weakness? Are you continuing in that same mistake and may, same weakness without thinking about that? That's the same. Hallelujah. But if you know that this is my weakness, if you know that this is my mistake, Ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I need to, I need a transformation. I need a change, oh Lord. I am planning to come back to the Lord. A second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. The second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. This is the right time for every person to come back to the Lord. To love him more and more, more and more than all the worldly things. Hallelujah. Let us love God. Let's love Jesus more and more. Hallelujah. Let us have that I mean, confidence in our life that I mean, I'm standing and I'm living in the presence of God always. Hallelujah. Do we have that close relation with God? If not, let us come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us I mean, repent about our mistakes. Hallelujah. Let us I mean, repeat everything that we were doing. Hallelujah. And let us remember where we are fallen. This morning, I, I would request my sister Ansi, uh, Reggie to lead us in prayer now.
and there shall be your claws or eyes in the presence of God according to the word of God as we were I mean meditating after we, as we were listening the word of God I mean now we are going to pray now sister Nancy uh, uh, Reggie will be praying